and welcome everybody to yet another episode of Crew Room Conversations. A very very happy New Year to each one of you, and may the year two thousand twenty one be much 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 better than the year two zero two zero. I've been a pilot for last twenty seven years, and the nearest a pilot can be to birds is fly in his aeroplane and soar the skies. But you know what is more closer to the birds is to fly without an aeroplane. Yes, we heard it right. Flying without an aeroplane is only possible when you do something called as skydiving, or you do something called as parachuting. And uh, I have been extremely intrigued by this whole subject. I also had the opportunity to jump myself from the AN32 many many years back. And when I decided to uh, look around for a particular senior of mine, I kept on looking for him, and I finally found him sitting uh, in the. Cold weather of Jammu, so here I am welcoming my dear senior, Captain Kamal. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Nathan. And uh, before we take this conversation further, let me take the privilege of uh, wishing each and every viewer watching us today a very happy and prosperous New Year. May God bless all of us. Sure, sir. And I can see from uh, you know, actually, when I was sitting in Pune, I was telling my family that I need to dress appropriately. As per the guest, but I can see you are in Jammu and it's really, really cold. I'm sure it's very cold. Yeah, it is very cold, very cold. Right. Okay, yeah. So for the viewers, uh, you know, understanding of the viewers, who the guest today is. So he is a retired group captain from the Indian Air Force, and uh, Kamal has got a rare distinction. I'm, I know when when you start to read whatever he has achieved in uh, his whole span of 26 years plus in the Indian Air Force, one is really amazed as to what all he has done. But just to give you some highlights, ladies and gentlemen, he's been a para jumping instructor with the Indian Air Force. He spent almost about four and a half to close to five years at the National Defence Academy, trying to instill the sense of adventure into our cadets. And he is singularly responsible, or he singularly achieved a feat of having four national records. One amongst them being jumping in the Antarctic. The other one being jumping at the South Pole near the Antarctic, as well as the geographical North Pole near the Arctic. He's also been a base jumper, and as the conversations flow, we are going to understand more and more about what this base jumping is. And uh, recently, just before he left the Air Force, he also had one more record, which was not broken for 19 years, of carrying the largest flag. So, what is going to be this flag carrying when you jump? Also, he'll explain to us as the conversations go around. So, really, really privileged and uh, very happy to have you on the show, Kamal. And uh, indeed, a great thing that uh, we could talk on a. Subject which is slightly different from the usual flying. So welcome, and we will just flow with the conversation. So feel free to tell us whatever stories you have because it's a very different subject. Uh, first time on my crew room conversations that I'm getting uh, a para jumper as such. So to start the conversations, uh, I just want to understand and to help our viewers understand that essentially what I know of, and when I did this particular course many many years back in the para training school at Agra. one of the elements or one of the tasks that the indian air force does is to train the paratrooping combat potential of all the indian armed forces am i right so could you just throw some light on what exactly is this para training school uh well it goes back to the pre independence uh, era you know uh, during the british times we had this paratroopers training school at a place called chaklala which is presently in uh, pakistan now and uh, after the partition the indian element of the paratroopers training school moved from chaklala to agra and it has been here since 1947 and uh, paratroopers training school is the only institution in the country it's the only school in the country which is uh, imparting parachuting training that also includes skydiving training to all the elements of the army that is all the parachute battalions of the army the special forces the commandos the president's bodyguard and things like that the marcos from the indian navy the uh, garuds from the indian air force and in addition to this whole load of you know like uh, the ncc cadets the gentlemen cadet from the officers training academies things like that so it is the institute where we impart this training to everybody Yeah, I think I think essentially uh, what I remember from my Air Force days, and surely it is the same that anything to do with parachuting in this country, 
the para training school is the last word as in the test of the experts who are posted there and eventually the people who get posted there they have to opt for a voluntary course and become what is called as para jumping instructors am i right yeah that's right the parachute jump instructors uh, is a volunteer uh, job you know uh, people come from different branches in the indian air force from different trades the airmen come from different trades in the air force and everybody needs to volunteer for this particular role it's very challenging it's very demanding and of course it's very risky also yeah i, I remember when i did the course way back and uh, incidentally when we started to talk you told me that you were also posted there uh, but we could never meet in the syndicate as such but uh, when i did the course what i could make out is that uh, it's an extremely professional outfit because like you are saying it's very very risky the whole affair of jumping from an a32 at a speed of anywhere between 200 to 220 kilometers from 1250 feet is a is a risky affair and everything that happens to the trainees so as to speak is controlled by the uh, the instructors there because when i did my jumps i thoroughly enjoyed the four jumps and the one jump by night and after you do the jump as a pilot i am sharing this with you uh, one is really so happy to put on that wing on your right uh, arm as such because you you are a pilot with one additional wing you know and not many pilots want to risk so i am i am totally with you when you are saying it is a risky uh, affair to start with uh, so my question to you is from a perspective to understand we have what you do in the para training school is a it's a kind of a, a combat a parachute which is used by the combatant right so what would be the speed at which an average person who jumps uh, what is his landing speed in in terms of feet per uh, second or is there any thing like that yeah uh, what we do at the paratroopers training school is primarily oriented towards uh, military parachuting okay what you do at the adventure cell in the indian air force is more to do rather everything to do with sports skydiving sure. so that is sports skydiving and this is military parachuting or combat uh, free fall courses and combat right. parachuting now uh, parachuting is primarily divided into you know two broad categories one is static line and the other is free fall a static line is one that you see in those uh, vintage movies you know the hemispherical round parachute yes. Yes. you know uh, jumping out of the aircraft that you get to see in most of the english movies you know the world war movies so that is one and in that the rate of descent when you have your canopy is fully deployed and you're coming in for a landing it is somewhere to the tune of about uh, 17 14 to 17 feet per second per second 14 yeah. feet per second okay yeah yeah so that's the kind of rate it takes and uh, yes you got to be lucky to be you know landing at a very soft place otherwise you you end up with tough landings also yeah. and uh, in skydiving the parachute is different okay. the dynamics are totally different and in that case the landings are actually super feather touch landings of course that comes with training but then you land actually very soft the rate of descent however still is almost the same as in static line but eventually when you come to touchdown you flare the canopy just like an aircraft lands on the runway you right. also flare your canopy and you go in for a smooth landing sure so they are better controllable as compared to the yes the combat yes, absolutely. And, absolutely absolutely and when you did this and when you transitioned on to the controllable parachutes and uh, things of that sort i'm also given to understand that uh, you got into the obviously the formation of so could you throw some light on when we see during the air force day parade or uh, any other event as such that the skydivers jump from the a32 and at some stage they get into some kind of formation so could you throw some okay, light on yeah, what exactly yeah. happens now now that is formation skydiving but now that comes under the umbrella of uh, sports skydiving okay it comes in the category of competition or sports skydiving mm -hmm. and in that uh, there are like you know there are various disciplines in sports skydiving also today i mean there are numerous of them so one of them is formation skydiving in which um, as uh, less as two skydivers to as many as couple of 100 skydivers they skydive simultaneously from a aircraft or okay. couple of aircraft flying together and as they fall before they open their parachutes uh, they actually fly in the sky they come close and they dock with one another making formations different formations that you see 
and uh, that is one of the most uh, you know sought after also you can say okay. disciplines in uh, sports uh, skydiving in different making different formations right and and to take our viewers through your experience and i've always been saying this uh, kamal to be honest with uh, you not only because uh, you are on the show today but i've always believed that the air force organizational culture is such this is not only the a particular branch of a particular stream that gets its own glory in inverted commas you if you show the interest in whatever passion you want to pursue the air force is a wonderful organization to encourage that particular individual and say okay you go ahead tell us what we can do for you you take even half a step and the organization will take one step so just take us through what exactly was this uh, you know your mission of jumping on the antarctic as well as uh, onto the geographical uh, north pole any any uh, more explanation on that i had just become a parachute jump instructor in the first week of september 1995 and a few months down the line in april 96 uh, those days squadron leader later retired as a wing commander sanjay thapar skydived over the geographical north pole yeah. and i was a very young instructor at the paratroopers training school and we got this news and i heard about this and it was a big news you know ki thapar sir ne north pole pe jump kiya hai and we were so proud of it and uh, what happened was uh, that day i still remember i was standing outside uh, basking in the sun april sardiyan garmiyan ka just wo wala season chal raha tha and i told myself ki god willing i'll be the first indian one day to skydive in antarctica and my journey started from this small sentence in my mind and in my heart and it took me another 3 and a half years down the line to be able to actually go to antarctica and undertake that one skydive jump the duration of which was not more than 2 minutes okay. but the journey was for almost 3 and a half years to reach yeah. till there yeah. so you jumped on the antarctic and the the record is also that the same person has jumped on to what is the geographical uh, okay level? yeah the thing was that uh, while uh, scorn leader sanjay thapar uh, jumped at he was the first indian to skydive over the geographical north pole i became the first indian to skydive in the white continent of antarctica but having done that i then you know pushed myself a little more and 2 years later in 2002 while i was an instructor at the national defense academy khadakwasla i undertook this expedition to the geographical north pole so while i was the second indian to skydive at the north pole but having skydived in antarctica i became the first one to have done at both the extremes of a planet so that oh. is where the record goes you know great great what a wonderful achievement and so so proud to have you on the show and sharing the same blue and the uh, same you know banner with you as such thank you so so, much. so i want to further ask you we've heard in your profile and uh, what is this base jump all about what is the meaning and how how does it correlate with skydiving base jumping is basically an acronym for b for buildings okay. a for antenna right. s for span that is generally the bridges and e for earth that oh, is see. mountain cliffs so skydivers who were not jumping from aircraft aircraft but okay. jumping from fixed ground objects now buildings okay. antennas bridges and mountain cliffs they're all fixed objects right so when you skydive or when you leap off from any of these platforms it becomes part of the sport called base jumping sure so what's been your memorable base jump was it an antenna or was it a earth and from the earth or which bridge oh that's that's a difficult one that's a difficult one because you know they all have been so challenging like i can quickly tell you uh, i have done a jump from antenna and aaj bhi jab main uska video dekhta hu and uh, standing on top of that antenna and that go gopro camera which i was carrying you know it has captured that wind right on top of that antenna and it's totally it's just me standing on that antenna and wo hawa jo usme record hui hai and my breath you know just before the jump so main aaj apna khud ka video jab dekhta hu main sochta hu yaar main kya kar raha tha you know <laughs> so it was so challenging right and um, while there was a bridge jump that i have done which has been one of the most challenging jumps of my life in that jump from the time i have left the bridge you know my physical contact 
as you know disengaged from the bridge to the time i have touched on the ground the total duration was just 7 seconds wow now seven. in these yeah just 7 second ye 7 second ke andar andar i have left the bridge i have jumped off the bridge i have thereafter initiated the opening of my parachute yeah. the parachute has opened i have got hold of the control lines just about barely control the parachute and by the time i have touched on the ground so all this thing has happened in a matter of just 7 seconds wow so you know wow. this has been uh, so to say another it was a jump from a bridge but again very challenging there was a jump from a mountain cliff in switzerland i remember i was uh, i must admit that i was actually scared that day jumping from that cliff and um, i think i would have spent about 15 minutes standing on that cliff looking down looking straight ahead thinking talking to myself eventually of course i jumped but then there are times when jab dar lagta hai mujhe bhi laga sir dar sabko lagta hai kamal i am i am i you know when when i did the parachuting course and when you are standing on the ramp and the aircraft is moving like this and you are moving you are looking behind i'll be honest to myself and i don't know how many people say that dar sabko lagta hai ki dar ke aage jeet hai you know i want to ask you a specific question and since you've been totally into adventure uh, we've had many people who say dar nahi lagta mere ko dar nahi laga i want to understand from a man who's been i see your profile also when i read it you've done some rafting expedition so you're an adventure enthusiast by in inverted commas birth in the air force as such so some light on this whole factor of fear what is this whole freak thing of fear har kisi ko dar lagta let's face it theek hai na um 99% people उनको डर लगता है एंड जो बाकी वन परसेंट है वो झूठ बोलते हैं सो नाउ द थिंग इज दैट एडवेंचर एंड फियर गो टूगेदर इफ फियर इज नॉट देयर एडवेंचर डजेंट एग्जिस्ट वो जो डर है वही एक्चुअली एडवेंचर बनता है देर इज वन वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल दैट आई गिव टू मेनी पीपल ड्यूरिंग सच कॉन्वर्जेशन आई से इफ यू आर राइडिंग अ मोटरसाइकिल से ऑन डेली जयपुर हाईवे फॉर एग्जाम्पल and uh, you are going on that bike in your left lane at 40 kilometers 50 kilometers an hour you will eventually reach jaipur after a few hours and there is no adventure in it aap aaram se chal rahe ho now the same bike same person same highway same road everything same you are now z- zipping at the max speed that the bike can take you at 110 120 130 100 40 kilometers an hour now suddenly the dynamics changes it gets dangerous because now the what has got dangerous actually the one sentence is now the risk to your life has increased now the moment the risk to life has increased the adventure element has come in the fear factor has come in so adventure and fear they are directly proportional to one another jitna dar hota chala jayega utna degree of adventure badhta chala jayega very nice 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 comparison i am saying i can see it you know nice comparison that dar jada lagega to maza bhi jada aayega and at some point in time each one of us will have its own limits and says okay kamal thank you very much this is it i cannot go beyond this or something like uh, that nitin one very important point i'll touch upon over here which i learned from my first chief instructor and i think he was the chief instructor when you had also come for jumps over there wing commander unni krishnan palat uk palat shorya chakra he once taught us this thing you know we were sitting on the runway and i was uh, undergoing uh, parasailing classes uh, with him and we were waiting 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 for the right kind of winds so that time you know he told us he said for any airman when we say airman means anybody who has got anything to do with the air activity whether it is flying skydiving anything to do with that you know so he said it is more important to know when not to do it rather than to know when to do it lovely i just love this the way you've articulated this and that is so so important today in the whole set of when i interact with corporates when i interact uh, as a corporate leadership coach you must know what not to do when to let it go what are your limits what are the winds because there are so many things that are beyond your control you've been a paratrooper i've been a pilot we seemingly seem to have control they have to play the gallery there is air force day everybody Absolutely. kamal everybody is there to clap for kamal landing but kamal knows today jump no sir winds are beyond beyond my 
limits which have been given and things like that. So we need to know when to say stop. Because हम जैसे बोलते हैं हमेशा कि जोश के कारण होश नहीं खोना चाहिए. Absolutely, you said it right. And that fine line, you know, that fine line which uh, which demarcates adventure and foolishness. You have to see that imaginary line, and you should know that where it is. So the element of adventure is surely, surely encouraged in the Indian Air Force as one way of living, as a part of our living and existence. And it comes it not specific to any branch or any gender as such. Adventure is you know gender neutral and it is branch neutral. Absolutely. So I'm sure you'll agree with me that both of us are extremely thankful that we we got the. Privilege to serve in the Indian Air Force, and uh, I for that five jumps I can, I can still live it, and I want to actually continue that someday, sometime maybe you know go and do a little bit of skydiving. But uh, I, I feel blessed, and I'm sure you also echo the same sentiments. So absolutely, absolutely, Nitin, and I feel if it could you permit me to take just another five seconds, you know the Air Force you're talking about, I'm also getting emotional about it. It sums up in that motto of the Indian Air Force, you know, Nabhas Prisham Deeptam. Touch the sky with glory. That is what this organization is there to support you for. So thank you very much, uh, Kamal, and uh, I look forward to you know interacting with you more now that you are uh, you are retired and you are setting up another adventure of your life. You are setting up your own adventure venture, so as to say, say in yes. Jammu. So all the very best for that. May Thanks you reach so higher and higher scales. And uh, thank you very much for being on the show. It's really a proud privilege and an honor for me to host you today. So Thank all the so very much. best and uh, Jai Hind. Thank you so much. Happy New Year, Jai Hind. So viewers, that was uh, our skydiver, the Indian Air Force national hero, Kamal Singh from Jammu. Until we meet next time. Thank you and Jai Hind.